But we wanted to finish with an interesting uh, report. We have an update from Aloro Tieno in Kisumu County. And I trust we, we, we have her on the line right now because, okay, so we ha if, you, if you look at the front page of the Daily Nation today, Nyanza Tua, President Uru Kenyatta, Opposition Leader Raila Odinga, set to launch development projects in Kisi today. We've seen a lot of activity in that part of the country in regards to development by the national government. And Laura Tena wants to tell us a bit more about what's been happening there and what that means uh, in terms of development because shouldn't development be decentralized? Shouldn't county governments be running this, not the national government? But yeah. Laura, what do you have for us? Well, indeed, Wahiga, as you have said, development projects in the greater western region have been uh, quite uh, on the rise. Uh, well, most uh, uh, some uh, people would say it's due to uh, the March 9th handshake, but of course that is a, 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 it's a, it's a point for debate. But then uh, we have seen an uprise in uh, matters development since uh, the beginning of uh, some time in the mid last year, and uh, most uh, the, the major rather the major projects that we so was the arrival of a dredger at the Kisumu Pier, which is set to revive the port, the ports along Kisumu all the way to Mbita. So uh, we are talking about development not only in Kisumu County but across the entire Nyanza Belt, stretching all the way to the western region. That dredger, which came in, was of course commissioned by uh, Raila Odinga, who uh, of course informed uh, the people who attended that uh, that commissioning that uh, there is a meticulous plan to uh, set up nine ports along the Lake Victoria shores to sort of revive maritime transport across Lake Victoria. Well, earlier on, the Kenya Pipeline Company had set up a 1.7 billion shillings oil jetty to try and revive uh, the region's oil business, which was uh, lost to Tanzania. So uh, the setting up of, jet of that jetty is uh, rather informed the coming of that dredger, which uh, was brought in by a, a Chinese-based group uh, called Mango Tree Group, which also will will bring in four vessels for the harvesting of water hyacinth and dig a 80 meter wide shipping channel to allow a b about seven big ships to dock which we inform that those seven big ships will be tankers that will, trans will be transporting oil from Kenya to Uganda. Well the commissioning of that oil jetty will be done in June when Uganda also launches a similar project so that it will be a sort of collaboration between the two countries where oil will be moving from Kenya to Uganda and consequently to the greater East African region and not only matters uh, of the port but also the Kenya Railways is also uh, set up to revive its railways channel so as to enable uh, containers coming from all parts of the country to dock uh, to, to arrive into uh, the Kisumu port and therefore be transported to all other areas and also the president was um, attending a burial in Mohoroni about two months back where he mentioned personally gave uh, sugarcane farmers an assurance that they will be receiving their money uh, uh, about two billion shillings there about or to them by the national government and he assured farmers that uh, he will personally see to it that the money is paid directly to their pockets and not uh, through companies as was the case earlier so this uh, all of course goes a long way in uh, uh, or, or rather proves the point that the national government is really keen on uh, realizing development in this region because the president also mentioned uh, the revamping of the Muhoroni Mamboleo Road uh, which is quite in a bad shape because of the lorries that transport sugarcane uh, between the Muhoroni and uh, Chemelil and all the other areas so he was saying that that road will be revamped to enable uh, transport or rather smooth transportation uh, for the cane farmers who are um, all right have been uh, quite uh, experiencing issues mm -hmm. concerning uh, much as zoning and uh, basically the sugar industry has been experiencing quite yeah. a lot of rocky issues but then the president said that they will be looking into that of course that also uh, goes into the formation of a sugar task force chaired by uh, right. the cog chair weekly for paranya so of course oh. that task force is yet to uh, present its findings but then it will be interesting to see what the president will do right. after that those findings are presented to him it so uh, there are a lot of development indeed, issues uh, i've mentioned sugar i've yeah. mentioned the other uh, pipeline Seems to be quite and, a, uh, <laughs> a lot uh the uhc program as well which the residents are also lauding as a All very right. noble initiative which is benefiting them 
quite greatly. So, of course, there are a lot of development agenda that we are seeing okay. here in Kisumu County. And also, before I forget, Wahiga, there is the revamping of the lakefront as a tourism site. And right. the CS for Tourism, Najib Balala, was in Kisumu two days ago. And he personally said that there is about okay. 300 million shillings that will be coming in from the national government to uh, revive the lakefront and make it a marketable tourist destination. So, of course, it is all a, right. a wait and see game to see whether all these projects will be implemented. And then from there is when we can analyze the impact of the politics of development in okay. this country, in this region, rather. Why he all right. Thanks, Laura. That's Laura Dino with the, quite a long list. Well, it's of a sign that a lot issues. has been <laughs> happening there. And that's what we want to find out from our panel here. Briefly, <laughs> politics, or development. development. What do you feel as you look at, or as you listen to what she had to say? Yeah. Well, I think the reality is that given how young our countries are and our economies are and our political systems are, politics will, will always be affecting the development. But I think we as Kenyans can make sure that the long-term vision, the technocratic vision that people have in government and outside government is what actually drives the politics. Right now it's the other way around. Mm. The politics drives the development agenda when actually it should be the development that then politicians speak to. This is the vision because we do have the vision 2030. The jobs of politicians is not to come up with new manifestos that bring things out, from, out of the sky but how are you going to speak to the specifications of vision 2030. The only way that's going to happen is if we as Kenyans demand it. So as long as we continue to give politicians the power <coughs> to drive the development and we'll sit here and talk about it all Day. So really, let us focus on experts who know and understand these things for a very long period of time. Okay. Let that because when you look at five years, things don't change that much in five mm. years. Really, well, are we? That's I think so different five years ago than they no. were today. The fundamentals are still the same pro problematic fundamentals. So I think really, can we have long-term visions? And the only way you can do that is to make sure that the politics speaks to the development, not the other way around. Okay. Yes, okay. a brief comment from you. I, I pick from where my sister has just ended. We, we have a long-term vision, development plan, and a vision 2030. My, our desire is that uh, we have every Kenyan focused around that vision, vision 2030, that anybody coming to ask for elective post yeah. should not be coming up with something new, but on the strategies that they have to reach us there. And I think that is, that is more of what we expect Kenyans to do, rather than uh, every time we want to change you know, the thinking. I think we have all done the thinking uh, across that we want, we are, the aspirations we want to have for Kenya <coughs> is to be a middle income country, yeah. that uh, at that time the livelihood live of Kenyans will have improved tremendously. So tell us how you reach there. And I think this is what we are doing in the, under this government with the big four, we are saying we are focused on four, but it's not that we are leaving the rest. You, we have over 21 ministries, and we are focusing on all the 16 sectors that make up gross domestic product, agriculture, livestock, fisheries. You have also mining, so what oil and gas. So what we're seeing, showing us in one part of the country is, yes. not, is not peculiar, in your view. It's not a sign that there have been good, there's been good politics there, and, and, and the people who live there now yeah, I think getting the benefits. Yeah, you can see the good stories that you, you, I can actually see from Nyanza. But I think our aspiration is to grow the country. Yes, in because a, the people in Turkana, in the northeast, yes. will also start asking yes. when will yeah. we see. No, but we have seen this through devolution. I think I've mentioned. Mm -hmm. the devolution has generated results. There has been equitable distribution of resources. There is also the, 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 the affirmative action through the equitable fund. And I think... We need to change the discourse now of this nation. And we are doing this through Big Four. So that the argument is not so much about sharing of resources, but more about begging the cake okay. to be bigger, so that when we share, it's enough for all of us. All right. Yeah. But Yaga, In the terms timing of, of baking the cake yes. to be bigger, yes, yeah. the timing of the development is uh, interesting. <laughs> However, <laughs> the, the political economy is something yeah. we, can't, we can't run away from. Mm -hmm. But the bigger picture is that devolution was supposed to assure Kenyans of shared prosperity. Yeah. So it's good when we see that happening. Okay. Um, as the association, we've looked at industries and we have industry presence in about 25 can counties, meaning there are about 22 counties that need to develop and grow their industries. Mm -hmm. What I would say in addition to what has been said about Vision 2030, we need to look at the issues of implementation, execution and accountability. Okay. So that we are very clear, we can have big documents, have big ideas, but really go down to that execution. What we've done as an association, we've developed the priority agenda. Mm -hmm. This is something that has put together the priorities that came out of the presidential roundtable on manufacturing, where we say these are some of the things we want to be done. They are very practical things. So that at the end of the year, we sit together here and take stock. 
were these things done? Because if some of these things are done, it makes a big difference in terms of moving the dial in manufacturing. So, so you need so to tell us what, the, what, are what we have, we promised to do, we have done. Yes. Okay. Okay. Things, okay. I started by... That's why we said, oh, you're And lastly, what are the practical things we are doing? In April, we are holding a big manufacturing summit and expo at Kasarani, okay. where we are telling Kenyans, come and buy and see what is made locally. It's themed Changamuka Kenya, yeah. and we are going to be working with the Ministry of Industry to promote the theme okay. of buy local, okay. so April. that we grow the industry. Okay. Yeah. We'll tell you. I, I think Final development, short and sweet. development yes. flows from policy. <laughs> policy flows from vision. Vision is politics. It's created by politics. So you say, I want to become president so that uh, my vision now for this country mm. is one, for example, among the, the two, three, four big things I want to see, I want to address the imbalance that has been in this country since independence, where development has tended to favor a certain s section of the country mm -hmm. or a certain sector. So now, if I'm the president, and that's my vision, so you see how development could land in Nyanza because they have been sat line for, for, for years. Uh, and therefore, we need to understand. Yeah. What does that mean for those in the north, for example? Who would also now, have that, that, is, that is one part of the country. Mm -hmm. you then, if, and if your vision was that one-sided, then it would be a wrong vision. I, I'm saying it could be a vision where you want to address all, okay. you know, the whole country, because mm -hmm. as opposed to the way it has been, mm -hmm. which in, in fact flowing from a session of paper of, mm -hmm. nine, of 1966, that there are certain places you should develop which were actual highlands and urban areas, and with the expectation that that development right. would then trickle mm -hmm. down to the other areas, you know. So you want to address that kind of thing. It's, so it's politics. All There's right. no way you can develop the, the divorce politics from development. All right. Ladies at and the and very highest and level, and then it goes down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for making Thank time you. this morning. We've run out of time. There's never enough time, but like Wenger <laughs> said, we'll <laughs> call you back and talk about the big four agenda as well. Special thanks to Anzet Sewere, development economist, Phyllis Wakiaga, CEO, Kenya Association of Manufacturers, Dr. Chris Kipto, PS State Department of Trade. And he told me to stop at that. <laughs> <laughs> the trade. For the reason we'll discuss another yes. time. <laughs> <laughs> and Herman Manuel, the <laughs> analyst, thank you so much for making the time. What have they been saying on SMS? Right, yes. everyone who watched as well, thank you. Let's yep. take a look at some of the SMS feedback. All right, Chris says, holding one's funds to be refunded after over 10 years is unfair. Not everyone will want to get a house. The plan should be optional since some of us have running mortgages. Absolutely, and we still have more of you speaking about the same issue of housing. The number of SMS is 224222. We have Captain Retired Mungai Njubi, who says, For the housing agenda to succeed, we must put in place a comprehensive land policy. Let's stop land fragmentation. Okay, I'm told we have one last one. Um, it's about the Big Four agenda, and this is Danson from Kakamega. The politicians are frustrating the Big Four. For instance, how do we achieve the Big Four on industrialization when the energy bill is still stuck at the Senate? Mm -hmm. You can't turn away from this politics. So a lot of yeses here and, you know, with our panel really nodding. Uh, but that's how we leave it for now. I don't want to get any feedback in regards to that. <laughs> because we'll start a whole new discussion. Right. So yeah. much more lined up on the all-new Daybreak. What else Absolutely. do we have? Zinzi? We have Workout Wednesday in Karate with the Willis Raburu. That's Zinzi. right. Zinzi Kibiku is also here with a lot of... What was that again? It's got an interesting story. Interesting Dr. story about Jennifer game changing. We a new segment yes. called The Game Changer. People who've changed yes. their games in terms of, changed their sectors rather. That's how we call it that. <laughs> or change their game. Will, really? yeah, change it their still game. works, yeah. <laughs> Taking it a notch higher. We need to take that break now. We'll be right back. <laughs>